Hey, this is Mike Robinson from the Mapex team. I'm here to talk to you about the new Sonoclear bearing edge that comes on all Armory and Mars series drum kits in 2014. One of the things about tuning that drummers struggle with is the ability to get the drum head to sit flat on the shell. As a result of the drum head not sitting flat, drummers over the last several decades have come up with all sorts of gimmicks and tricks in order to get their drums to sound their best. One of the things that you'll notice if you were to put this standard 12 inch Remo Ambassador on a typical bearing edge, which is a inside 45 cut with a fairly sharp bearing edge situated to the far outside of the shell, is that when you put the drum head on, the drum head tends to rock. And the reason that happens is because the apex of the bearing edge is hitting the collar of the drum head as opposed to the flat plane of the drum head. And when that happens, you put one side down and it makes the other side ride high. Now, when you go to put your counter hoop on and you go to start tuning the drum, automatically, as soon as you put tension on one tension rod, it's going to flip the drum head and make it ride high on the other side. And that's why drummers have learned to use what's called the cross lug tuning sequence. It's the, uh, it's like changing a tire on your car. You go here, 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 and here. And the reason that you use that technique is you need to be able to bring the drum head down very slowly and very evenly across all points, across all tension rods. That's the only way that you can prevent that shift or that high spot on one side. What also happens when you're tuning is you need to get the drum head to a higher pitch than you'd really like. And the reason you do that is in order to get the drum head to start to resonate, it needs to make full contact with the shell. Well, if you've got this type of action happening, you actually have to stretch the drum head beyond its natural state in order to get the drum head to resonate. And that's gonna make your drums tune at a higher pitch. You won't be able to tune them as low. With the Sonoclear bearing edge, what we've done is to create an inside 45 cut that's true on uh, snare drums and rack toms, inside 60 on floor toms and bass drums. But the real key to this is that we've created a rounded back cut on the outside. And what that's done is it's, it's taken the apex of the bearing edge and moved it closer to the center of the shell. The other thing that we've done is we've taken the bearing edge and we've flattened it down a little bit across the top. On the smaller drums that have the inside 45 cut, you have about one and a half plies of contact. On the bigger drums that have the 60 degree inside cut, you have about two plies of contact. And I'll explain about more contact in a minute. But the first thing I want to demonstrate is that compared to a typical bearing edge where you see this rocking action, when you slide over to the Sonoclear bearing edge, it sits 100% flat. There's no rocking at all. Now this should be obvious to most people that when you put a counter hoop on here and you start tuning up the drum, you're starting from a more relaxed state with the drum head. It's not going to be over tensioned in order to start resonating. You're gonna be, you're gonna be able to tune it at a much lower pitch and using all of your gimmicks and cross lug tuning sequences and doing drum CPR and a stretch out the drum head and all the other gimmicks that we've all used in order to get our drums to sound good aren't necessary. Tuning is greatly simplified with this bearing edge. One of the things about the way drums have been built for the last several decades is your better shells and your better bearing edges come typically only on the more expensive drums. Yet the most expensive drums are only affordable by people who already have some tuning skill. The less expensive drums, the beginner, the step up, and the intermediate drum sets that are available on the market have this type of typical bearing edge. The irony in that is that the players with less tuning experience, those that haven't developed their technique yet, perhaps they haven't been instructed on how to properly tune the drum, Perhaps their, their tuning ears aren't developed or their feel feels real important in tuning. For those players, they have to deal with drums where tuning is even more of a challenge. 
and that results in their drums not really sounding their best and when they're not sounding their best they're less likely to want to play them. So with the Sonicleer bearing edge we are addressing the, the majority of the market that really does struggle with tuning. We've asked a lot of questions of our consumers, of artists, or of our, our dealers and unanimously they all agree that probably 90% of the drum market really has frustrations about tuning. You know, some people may be a little bit better than others, but overall, so many drummers have, have been frustrated with tuning drums over the years. And I think that you could probably see evidence in the number of tuning videos that have been put out over the last several decades and the number of YouTube videos on tuning that are consistently watched. It ranks among the highest of drum content on the web. So it's clear that drummers want an answer to the problem. They want to spend less time tuning and they want to be able to just sit down and play the drums and, and have confidence that with just a few turns of the key, they're going to sound good. One of the other benefits of the Sonic Clear Bearing Edge is the increased contact between the head and the shell. We talked a little bit earlier about how the Sonic Clear Bearing Edge is shaped. We have this flattened apex rather than a real sharp apex. The issue with a sharp apex, as has been the trend in the drum industry for a really long time, is the sharper the edge, the more overtones you get. The very same overtones that drummers are trying to tune out. Most drummers, when they're tuning on a sharp edge, will do something with either head selection or a piece of moon gel or tape or a, a, an O-ring or, or something that will get that drum under control and eliminate those overtones. All of those things are simply applying mass to the vibrating drum head. And when you apply mass to something, it damps it. What we're doing with the Sonicleer bearing edge is we're actually using the mass of the shell itself. By increasing the amount of contact between the head and the shell, we're applying mass. And when you apply mass, you control those overtones. You're not at all limiting sustain or resonance or any of the things that you want what we're controlling are the overtones that drummers are naturally trying to get rid of with their various tuning and damping techniques. The other benefit of having increased contact between the head and the shell is you get the shell to vibrate more. Typically on a sharp bearing edge, what you're hearing from the drum is about 90% drum head sound, top and bottom drum head, and the selection of drum head that you make. With the sonic clear edge, because we're getting the shell to resonate more, we're tipping that balance more toward the shell side. Yeah, you still hear a lot of drum head sound and that has a huge effect, the choice of drum head that you make, but you're getting more shell sound. And that means that you're gonna hear the nuances between all birch or all maple, or in the case of a lot of Mapex drums, hybrid shells, whether that be uh, a birch maple birch, as in the case of the new Armory series, or eventually when we put the Sonic Clear Edge on Saturn, you'll hear the nuances of that uh, maple walnut. What you see when you record a drum that has the Sonic Clear Edge versus one that has a typical bearing edge is two things. One, when you examine it on a oscilloscope, you see that there's a much larger waveform that develops. That larger waveform indicates more low end, more body. The larger the waveform, the more low end that's coming out of the drum. The second thing that you see when you do a waveform analysis is the length of the sustain and the fullness of that sustain. When you compare a sonic clear edge with a typical edge, the biggest difference is in the fullness of the drum sound and also the length of sustain you gain more fullness and more length out of the sustain because the drum head is able to be tuned in a more relaxed state. It's not having to be reshaped over a bearing edge that it does not fit well. It fits naturally on the sonic clear bearing edge and therefore tunes more naturally and sustains more naturally. So let's get to it and actually show you how one of these heads tunes up on the sonic clear bearing edge. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start tuning this drum. I've chosen one of our Mars shells because it's one of the lower priced in the line that has the new bearing edge. 
it's targeted at the younger player, perhaps a, a second kit or even a, a higher end first time kit, or perhaps even a kit for a gigging pro that just needs a kit to go around town and play gigs. So we're starting with the head totally loose. There's no tension on any of the rods. And we're gonna start by breaking the first commandment of tuning, and that's that we're gonna go around and tune in a circle rather than use our cross lug tuning sequence. Now at this point, just tuning these three tension rods, what would normally happen with a typical edge is this side of the head would seat completely, this side would lift up, and the head would never get up to tension. It would never tune properly. So we're going to continue around. We're going to check it. Already we're starting to hear a little bit of tone out of the drum. It's not tuned. We're going to hit it every time. without using any of the proper methods. We were able to go around in a clockwise fashion rather than use the cross lug tuning sequence and the drum sounds pretty good. Now as you gain tuning experience, you'd want to use your cross lug tuning sequence to really optimize the sound, but the fact is, is that most of the market really struggles with tuning and if they can be able to tune a drum with ease as the way I just did, even by breaking all the rules and still get a great sound, that means there's far less time involved in tuning and a lot more time playing. The other benefit that the Sonic Clear Edge provides is typically when a drummer has got a couple of tunes into his gig, either the rack tom or one of the drums tends to drop in pitch. And what happens is they reach up with their key and they touch one rod. And as they do, it would normally knock the drum completely out of tune. And nobody has time in between tunes in order to properly retune the drum. They're typically just going to try to get it back up to pitch and with one tension rod. So what I'm going to show you now is on just one tension rod, the amount of torque that you can get both up and down while still preserving a good sound quality. So we're starting off in a pretty good, pretty good spot and I'm going to take the key on one tension rod and just go up and down in pitch without really degrading the sound quality of the drum. It's amazing that you're able to do that on one tension rod without really losing the sound quality, without losing resonance, without the drum completely detuning. That's a huge benefit of the Sonic Clear Edge and it shows you just how much forgiveness is built into this bearing edge and it makes drummer's life of tuning a lot easier. Now you can tune less and play more.